Hey guys, I'm Andre. I'm Elton. Yeah, I'm Tristan. And this is ATV. We're gonna be uh, reacting to some more Ruby stuff, but more of like catch up, like all the World of Remnants that we missed. And some extra stuff too. Yeah, that we just didn't see throughout because we were just trying to get through it. And but, we were also recommended to. Yeah, yeah right? that was recommended by a Nerd Wolf Pack that will also be in here. And uh, I guess pretty much like that, let's just go and watch it then. Ruby. Oh. It's the story of dust. Yeah. yeah. He's gonna talk about dust. Dust. These are just, these are just stories. By definition, are... it is a naturally a occurring energy Ruby. repellent that can be triggered by the aura of humans and faunas. But in reality, it is much, much more. Found in four basic forms, dust can be combined, both artificially and naturally, to form new, stronger types, each with unique properties. Since its discovery, man has concocted a multitude of ways in which to harness the powers of these mysterious crystals. From airships to androids, dust has made its way into practically every facet of technology. Some prefer to use dust in its raw form, Electricity. Elegant, yet destructive. <laughs> Those who choose to wield dust in this state must possess a certain level of discipline to ensure that their resulting powers do not break free from their control. So, sort of just like using lightning. Dust fire, ammunition shoot. serves as a more practical application in today's modern society. That's what it is. With See, that's why advancements in weapon design, warriors need simply choose the right cartridge for the job and pull the trigger. While this has become the standard method of use, it is not uncommon to find individuals still practicing more archaic forms of dust manipulation. Like such as weaving it into clothing, or even fusing it directly with their own bodies. Despite working, fighting, and even turning a profit with it, humanity has still yet to understand how dust came to be. And more importantly, Voices. how their involvement with dust will ultimately change the world of Remnant. There okay. you go. Dust. D U S. Let's get into the next one. Yep. History of Resident Kingdom. Kingdom. Hey. The world of Remnant yeah. is a dangerous yeah. place, particularly for man. In the countless years that humanity has roamed the planet, civilizations have grown and fallen, but four have withstood the test of time. Hey, it's a dragon. Atlas, Mistral, oh. Vacuo, Veil. These four kingdoms, with the help of natural barriers and human tenacity, have proven that they have the will to survive. Each kingdom has a governing council to represent the people and their four needs. Major. Next comes the military. While most kingdoms only call on its citizens to serve when needed, others find it important to be prepared. There are still those who choose to venture outside the walls of the kingdoms. Roaming nomads in small villages are not uncommon, yet neither is their tendency to disappear overnight. Because of the... Lastly, the, ribs, right? the Huntsman Academies. These <laughs> institutions' sole purpose is to train the next generation of Huntsmen. The next generation of defenders that will live and die to protect the lifestyle that they've become so accustomed to. Yes. The world of Remnant is indeed a dangerous place, but the Four Kingdoms stand as beacons of hope, as safe havens from the darkness that surrounds them. They are the key to mankind's survival, as long as they stand united. Ominous. So was it Veil, Veil, Mistral, uh, Vakulus, and Vakulus? Gotcha. Which, uh, you know, uh, fact, I don't know if it's too much of a fact, because I, I think I just heard it, but uh, 
Apparently that mat yeah. came about when Monty was at a diner. Yeah. And literally, I think he like put his food and he just started scrambling. And that was the pattern? And the pa- that's the pattern that it made. Wow. <laughs> I, th- I think that's what hey. it's correct it. Correct I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, right correct right it. I'm pretty, sure, but I'm pretty sure that's what people say. Um, but that. if that's true, yo, that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> he just used some of his food. Like inspiration. Sick. Okay, so I guess we're going to go into the next one now. Let's go. Yep. Keep going. Thanks for the rain. What's this about? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Let's see. The Grim. The Grim. Yeah, what are they exactly? Let's find out. <laughs> the creatures of Grim. A ravenous, destructive force that covers the majority of England. While often referred to simply as Grim in the common vernacular, these beings serve as the greatest foe to mankind. For as long as humanity can recall walking the surface of Remnant, so do they remember this wicked force. Many ancient cultures believed the creatures of Grim to be animals possessed by evil spirits, or perhaps the spirits of tortured animals themselves. However, further study, as well as the discovery of newer, more horrific forms of Grimm, does not support this hypothesis. With new creatures discovered every day, scientists perpetually find themselves with more questions than answers. While very little is known of their origin, some key facts have been observed in the wild. First and foremost, the Grimm exclusively attack humans and their creations. While occasional skirmishes between wildlife and Grimm have occurred, these instances appear to be based on territorial provocations rather than a need for sustenance. In fact, the common belief is that the Grimm are not obligated to feed. They choose to. What is perhaps even more unsettling is the basis of their attraction. The creatures of Grimm are lured towards negative emotion. In the rare instances when villages are capable of defending against a wave of Grimm, their survival is not guaranteed, as widespread panic will only lead to more attacks. Little else is known about the creatures of Grimm. Keeping them in captivity has proven to be an understandably difficult task, as the creatures tend to either die or kill those who imprisoned them in the first place. To further complicate study, the corpse of a Grimm will only remain for a short period of time before completely evaporating. It's like a Those titan. Those who hunt the beasts for sport find this particularly upsetting, Sorry. but manage to get by with cheap taxidermic recreations and bombastic storytelling. Huh. Although the creatures bored. of Grimm yeah. appear mindless, more delicate observation has proven contradictory. It has been noted that while younger Grimm tend to be more reckless, older Grimm, who have managed to survive their battles, have the tendency to learn from their experience and will exercise caution in the future. This perverse form of self-preservation allows the creatures to become more effective killers. And in the end, killing is all that matters. Creeps. They're monsters. They don't even need to eat or anything. They just kill people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Grim are like. They're, they're really like, scary. They are like titans, where they just titans don't need to eat either. They just kill humans for no reason. Yeah. Uh, we need more it, revelations in the future. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot that it still doesn't really say about Grim in there. Because mm. like, but jeez, man, there's creepy things. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Chinese. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hey, hold on. Okay, phone in here. Okay. Okay. Aura. Oh yeah, hey, John. Yeah, everyone has aura. Huntsmen are widely regarded as the world's greatest warriors. 
While skilled in a wide variety of weaponry hmm. and hand-to-hand -hand combat, these champions are also masters of a much greater power. Aura. Aura is a manifestation of the soul. A life force that runs through every living creature on your net. Whether they are a meager shopkeep or a renowned knight. However, what sets true warriors apart from all others is their ability to amplify and control their aura. Aura is primarily used as a defensive mechanism, passively coating the wielder in a protective force field. It can protect Aki. the combatant from what would normally be a fatal blow. It does not, however, make the user invincible. As they receive more and more damage, their aura reserve will deplete. If this happens, all the fighter will be left with is his resolve. Fortunately, when a fight turns gruesome, a warrior can also rely on their aura in a different manner. Semblance is a term used to describe the projection of aura into a more tangible form. Mm -hmm. For some, this could be the ability to control objects with telekinesis. Yeah, For others, it could mean superhuman strength. The power associated with a wielder's semblance is completely unique. Same. With enough training and focus, a user's aura can turn them into something much more than just a man. That's his coffee. Mm -hmm. That was kind of tea. That was kind of ominous. I didn't say turn more into a man and then Oz then just showed up. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it was kind of weird. That's the end for the remnants yep. for now. That's all the world of remnants. First from volume two. Uh, and now we're gonna watch watch the video that was recommended to us by Nerd Wolf Pack. Yeah, let's go. Mm -hmm. And thank you, thank you for for recommending in the first place because I probably would have not yeah. even put this in here if it wasn't for yeah. you. Thanks for the recommendations, guys. Okay, here we go. These are alternate versions yeah, of different are... people dancing. Damn or... those moves. <laughs> yeah, remember when uh, John was yeah. doing that? So this is them dancing. Uh, Heck yeah! <laughs> what? Oh, there's more people. Oh, it's those dudes. <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, I'm pretty sure hey, this is a. Uh, hey, hey, hey. They, like, <laughs> it's just that they switched the models. And yeah, pretty yeah. much to their design. Their character. Uh, it's pretty funny though. Yeah, hey, the teacher. <laughs> Professor O Black Man? <laughs> so you think you can dance, eh? That's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Lit. Oh, hey! hey. hey. <laughs> My goodness. Uh. Oh, oh! Man, we gotta start learning this too, yo. <laughs> we need a fourth member. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. It's, the, it's the bad guys. Yeah. Mm. Bring it. My <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Look at the bird. <laughs> Look at the bird. <laughs> I like the boy so much. Yeah. He's like not even moved. He's just like. <laughs> uh, oh, no, that's funny, yo. <laughs> it's like maybe we'll do one, right? Yeah, well, we'll you need a fourth yeah, member. Yeah, but whatever. That's Probably so need a fourth member. But yeah, that's hilarious, yo. What do you think? Oh, that was so funny. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're going to uh, react to um, the ending scene. You know, see that was in volume two that we didn't do at the end. We didn't do it because it's technically not canon, I yeah. guess you would say. Oh. It's kind of like a retcon that they did because... Because what? Beca because <laughs> just Monty, because he, he, was gonna, he was going to put this in. Hmm. So it was going to be part of the storyline, but he decided not to use it after. Yeah. On, so it has almost absolutely nothing to do. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's just check it out then. 
this was not the this is not canon that they didn't yeah. use it. It was at the ending of the last episode. Oh, season one? Season uh, two. Volume two. Oh. I'm with her. The Gosh. person that saved Yang. Who are you? <gasps> Wait, what? Is that Yang? Yang. We have a lot to talk about. Whoa! If that was canon... Damn. I don't know if we should say who that is yet, though. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I mean, who do you think it is, Tristan? I think it's, uh... Your mom. Or it could be her. She just dyed her hair again. But yeah, whose mom? Back from time. But whose mom would it be? Or Ruby's? Ru Ruby and Yang have different moms. It could be Ruby's because she's red. You know what I'm saying? Am I getting close? <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Anyway, they're not gonna spoil it for me. But yeah. But like you said, it's not supposed to be canon because Mon, because Monty was going to do use it, but decided uh, not to or something. Or they all decide to or whatever. They just didn't go with it. So have any technical meaning but that gets concludes the the catch-up part yep. of showing everything we missed from all the volumes that dancing video is really fun yeah, yeah. you know that boar that bird that bird <laughs> flying in the floor that didn't do anything <laughs> that, was, that was good so yeah i guess that uh it for this one we're gonna start getting into vol for volume Three soon, so watch out for those videos that yeah, we're gonna have. Subscribe up. if you wanna see it. So if you liked our videos, don't forget to like, put the like button and subscribe, and also put in the comments of anything you want us to react to, uh, series or not, even just some videos. And we'll see you guys in volume three. Peace out. See ya.